Hello and welcome to a new video on YouTube channel of tutorialspedia.com. In this video, we will talk about API management best practices. Here is the detail of what we are going to cover in this video. First of all, we will talk about API security and policy enforcement and the best practices that uh, we need to take into consideration in terms of security and enforcing policies on our APIs and API resources. Next, we will talk about best practices about uh, how we uh, have to publish the APIs to make them discoverable and make them available uh, for our end users and clients. Then we will talk about some of the best practices and considerations in terms of APIs uptime and APIs availability uh, for the clients. The next, we will talk about uh, best practices in terms of API analytics through the analytics dashboards. And then we will shed a light on uh, API management platform monitoring best practices and things that we need to consider whenever we are uh, setting up API management platform. After that, we will shed a light on performance tuning uh, for API management and the best practices that we need to follow. Then we will talk about uh, how and uh, what are the best manners that we can uh, make sure that uh, we are upgrading our API management platform. And then we will talk about one of very important point, which is scalability considerations. And uh, I will explain what are the best practices and how we, we can ensure that API management platform that we have is scalable and it, it, is, it is in a position to handle any, uh, any higher loads and, uh, and, and exponential growth in our traffic and in our end users. And last but not least, we will talk about some of the best practices for periodic performance and security assessments for our API management platform. Okay, so before I proceed with all these points and explain all of these concepts in detail, I will request you to please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if it's not subscribed by you before and uh, don't forget to press the bell icon as well so that you are able to get latest videos and you are notified about any new videos uploaded on this channel. So let's start uh, discussing all of the points one by one. The first important point is about API security and policies enforcement. Security is one of the major concern in most of the organization and in most of the businesses since we are exposing our assets through the APIs. So it's become very critical and very significant for any organization to ensure that whatever resources they are exposing through the API manager or through API gateways, they are secure enough and there is no risk of uh, any data breaches or any type of uh, security attacks on their environments through these exposed endpoints. So when we talk about the security and uh, in terms of API management best practices, the first important point is that uh, whatever API resources and API operations we are exposing through API manager, we should have uh, API level or resource uh, or operation level authorization and access control policies implemented. So normally what we do is that we go with the JWT based uh, uh, tokens or we go with OPEC uh, authorization tokens or uh, we provide different options for the clients uh, for different grant types. So it's very important that whenever you are choosing a grant type or whenever you are choosing the mode of access to be given to the clients, it should be uh, controlled uh, with proper policies. For example, you should make sure that uh, you, you don't share uh, any JWT tokens or you don't provide any option for the tokens which are uh, never expiring. There should be a specific expiry for your token. And secondly, whenever you are providing access to the clients, then th th this should be on the resource level as well as there should be uh, some authorization if needed at operation level as well. For example, in case of WSO2 API manager, we have the option of using scopes so we can use scopes and that way we can have uh, our enforcement of policies and enforcement of authorization and access control at individual operation level within the api resources and it's very important that uh, we take these points into consideration whenever we are configuring and publishing our apis and also uh, most of the api managers be it uh, google apg be it uh, mulesoft api manager or wso2 api manager or any other uh, api management product which is available in the market they come with a bundle of uh, policies uh, for the security and uh, you should uh, consider those policies and you should efficiently use those policies like we have policies for blacklisting and whitelisting so if you have some uh, specific uh, uh, type of uh, 
it's a type of IP addresses or a range of IP addresses which 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 has been involved in certain type of attacks or which are uh, risky so you should make sure to apply the blacklisting for those and uh, in 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 case of a very strict type of business you can go with the specific whitelisting policies in which case only whitelisted ips will be allowed to hit uh, your api manager and access the backend apis and another very important point is that you should have payload validation policies uh, to avoid any attacks and to make sure that uh, any of the vulnerable or any of that type of uh, risk associated uh, payload doesn't reach to the backends because the purpose of API management there is to make sure that all these things are handled at API manager level and a gateway level and, it, and any of these type of uh, security risks don't uh, reach to the backend. So if you have the payload validation policies implemented, so you can validate uh, and make sure that the payload, or XML or JSON or whatever type of data that you're receiving is uh, in a valid format against some of the predefined XSDs or some of the predefined formats that you have and in that way any of the any of the data which is well which is security risk will never reach to the back end and it will be discarded and dropped at the api management uh, api gateway level the next important point that you should consider whenever you are implementing and when whenever you are setting up your api management platform is that you should also uh, consider quality of service policies for example you should have throttling and rate limiting and uh, even if even if monetize even if monetization is enabled for uh, your API management platform and users are being charged, even in that case, you want to make sure that your backends are not overloaded and you don't get uh, unnecessary spikes uh, or you don't get any type of denial of service attacks or those type of uh, situations where the traffic uh, and trends are abnormal. So to avoid that or to control that. Uh, uh, you should have throttling and rate limiting policies. You can have SLA based uh, rate limiting policies as well, which are agreed between you and your clients. So in this way, you will make sure that uh, the traffic that is coming to uh, your API management gateway and reaching to the back end is valid uh, traffic only. And there is no such risk of uh, having uh, denial of service attacks or, or certain spikes in your traffic. And then you should enforce uh, quotas as well. Most of the API management platforms do provide you options to define quotas. So you can have different type of uh, custom defined quotas. And accordingly, whenever uh, your clients are going to subscribe to your APIs, they will select what kind of quota uh, they want for any, any particular API or any particular resource. And accordingly, their, their request uh, to the APIs will be entertained. All these points that we discussed in terms of security and security policies are at the API management level, but you should also consider transport level security using SSL. It's very important because uh, all the data that is coming from the user to your uh, gateway is coming through the public internet and uh, it's vulnerable and uh, it's a security risk and there can be a man in the middle attack or there can be any such hacker who is going to steal the data that is passing through the internet. So SSL should be enforced. And also in the, case, in the cases of B2B, where you have a business to business integration, and if in case you have a business scenario where your APIs are going to be consumed or utilized by a specific set of users, a specific set of clients, which are the business clients and not the direct and not the cases of B2C, so in those cases, you can even enforce uh, two-way SSL or mutual SSL, and in that case, uh, you will be make sure you will be making sure that uh, the certificates uh, are managed and certificates are checked at both server and the client level, and all the communication that is happening is further foolproofed. I have uh, uh, put a link in the suggestion box uh, if you want to further uh, understand the difference between one-way and two-way SSL. So the next best practice that we will talk about is for APIs discovery through developer portal. So whenever you have new APIs, you publish them through your publishing platform. And once you publish and make it available for the clients, they are able to discover it. They are able to use it from the developer portal. In some cases, it's called API store as well. So the namings might be a slightly different if you're using a different type of API management platform. 
So API should be well categorized and should be easily discoverable from the developer portal. So it's very important because you are creating your APIs to be discovered, to be used, to be consumed. So you don't want that uh, your APIs uh, are published, but the potential users or potential clients or those that developer community which is going to benefit from your API doesn't know about it and is not able to reach to your API, to look into your API and take interest in your API. So for this purpose, you should make sure that when you are publishing your API, you're using tags, you're pro using proper descriptions when you publish your APIs. Because from the tags and from the descriptions, users will be able to uh, have a better search for your APIs uh, from the developer portal. So if you have a very less number of APIs, in that case, uh, you might think that it's not very much important and it's very easy for your uh, clients or your developers uh, or potential clients to uh, search for your APIs. But whenever the number of APIs uh, and the count of APIs on your developer portal grows, then categorization and use of tags and proper descriptions become very important. Another important point is API versioning, and you should maintain proper versioning with proper lifecycle management. So it's very important that uh, you don't uh, deprecate your APIs or you don't uh, move the lifecycle of your APIs abruptly. It should be well organized and it should be communicated well and your client should be informed well. So whenever you are going to publish your API, if you have a new version that's going to be available for the clients, you should uh, not uh, just uh, simply deprecate and uh, or uh, remove the life cycle of the previously de deployed version to the unpublished state you should keep it for a certain time and the client should uh, you should be monitor and you should uh, look into the patterns and trends of your clients uh, moving to the new version and once uh, you you are aware that the new version is fulfilling all the needs and the previous version is in a position to be discarded for several reasons maybe in terms of big business functionalities that is providing or maybe for some other technical reason so only then you can deprecate your old version with proper communication and proper information and alerts to the clients the next important point for the api discovery is that api management platform should have proper alerting mechanism i just uh, talked about this that whenever you have uh, any apis published you all your potential clients are all those people who are already uh, already subscribed to that set of uh, or that category of uh, APIs, they should be alerted or there should be email communication or any mode of communication with your clients and with your potential clients so that they know that uh, some, some specific API or some specific version of API has been published, which is of their interest. The next point that we should consider is that APIs should have enough documentation available through the portal. Documentation is what explains what exactly your APIs are, what is the uses of these APIs, what are the different operations and resources available, and you should make sure that you're writing your documentation in such a way that it is uh, understandable for the developer community, and they are able to explore it uh, in the best possible way. So you should have proper documentation. Other than that, you should have some examples provided for each use case, you should have some scenarios explained in the documentation for which uh, your APIs are useful. And also, it's important that uh, you should have proper forums and blogs available in your uh, API developer portal. Because if you have blogs and, develop, uh, and forums available on your developer portal, then uh, for topics on these forums uh, make the communication two-way. And you get a proper and real-time feedback from the developer community and based on the feedback that you receive from the developer community community you always have a chance to improve uh, and uh, make things better and make things in a way that uh, developers can utilize it in the best possible way the next important point uh, in terms of uh, api developer portal for the best practices is that uh, it's very important that uh, the APIs that you publish and make available for the clients through the developer portal, they should be easily subscribable and uh, you should provide a convenient manner to uh, do the subscription, creation of the application, generation of the access tokens, and also uh, you should have uh, try it out options and things like that on your developer portal so that they are able to play around uh, with your APIs and quickly uh, uh, jump into the implementation on their side.
And another important thing is that uh, most, uh, many of these uh, API management platforms do provide SDKs, which uh, assist and aid uh, in the faster implementation of the applications using these APIs. So uh, whenever you are choosing an API management platform or whenever you are configuring your API management platform, make sure that it does provide uh, uh, useful SDKs for the users. For example, in case of WSO2 API manager, it does provide uh, necessary SDKs for the developers for Android, Java, and .NET. So these type of things make the implementation uh, faster and time to market for the companies which are going to utilize your APIs becomes quite uh, faster. So the next point that we are going to discuss uh, for the best practices is uh, uptime. Uptime is very important because uh, APIs that you expose uh, to your uh, API management platform are going to be used by the developer community uh, for the applications, which might be very critical in terms of business functionality and in terms of the time criticality. So it's very important that uh, the APIs that you expose have uh, ideally 100% uptime, or, and uh, even if not 100%, which not, doesn't seem to be realistic, it should be 99.9% .9 uptime. So this means that uh, the way uh, you set up your API management platform, the way uh, you set up your backend services uh, and the backend endpoints should be in such a way that uh, there is minimal and ideally no impact on the clients or on the users whenever you have any upgrades, whenever you have any modifications or whenever you have uh, any uh, next uh, level of versioning for your APIs. So whenever you are adding any new versions and publishing those, or whenever you are deprecating any old versions, it's very important that uh, it should be communicated properly and it should be announced uh, well ahead of time so that uh, the developers community and developers who have used your APIs in their applications are well aware of this. And if they have to take any action, if they have to make any changes, they can do it uh, properly. Secondly, uh, since uh, you, the APIs that you are exposing through the API gateway and through API management platform, are critical in nature, so you should uh, make sure that uh, you are opting for a cluster-based distributed architecture and the way you are uh, exposing your APIs uh, and the gateway as well as the backend systems that you are using for your APIs, they should be uh, deployed and the topology that should be used for their deployment is should be fault tolerant and highly available. So in this way, let's suppose that you are going to make any uh, upgradation or any changes for your backend or for your API gateway. It should be transparent for the users. And uh, if, if it's clustered and if you have multiple servers fulfilling the needs of your clients, then uh, you can have an approach where you are not going to bring all of those gateways or all of the backends down at the same time. And you will make it in such a way that even you, if you have outages or you have uh, any type of... Uh, uh, issues coming in, uh, you, you are able to fulfill the client's requirement to the other set of servers in your cluster. And if you have a clustered distributed approach for your API gateways and for your backends, then you should go for the network load balancer uh, to uh, balance the traffic that is coming to your API gateway. So using the load balancer, you can use different type of uh, algorithms for uh, distribution of traffic, like you can use a weighted round robin, or you can use any other uh, algorithm as per your requirement. And in that way, you not only you are making sure that uh, you are able to fulfill the client request, but also you ensure that uh, the traffic that is coming to your network, that traffic that is passing through the API management platform is getting distributed in a proper, efficient, even manner for your backend systems. And it's also important that uh, in case of worst, uh, worst case scenarios uh, where you have something wrong on your gateways or if you have some problems on the backend services, the error codes and error messages that you are returning to the client, those should be understandable and those should be uh, already agreed and should be available in the documentation. There should not be any sudden surprise for your uh, API users or API uh, developer community whenever they see some type of error messages, which are actually the technical jargons and the actual stack traces of your errors. Rather, you should have proper, uh, well-formed and understandable and well-agreed error codes and error messages being passed to the clients. All right, so the next important point that we are going to look into is API analytics. And it's very important that uh, the analytics 
dashboards and analytics uh, uh, platform that is provided by these API management uh, offerings is being utilized in an efficient manner because analytics are going to help you not only to understand the usage pattern but also for any possible flaws or any possible rooms for improvement uh, for the APIs that you are exposing to the clients. So uh, many of these API management platforms provide you a rich set of uh, dashboards that you can utilize like uh, dashboards to show the usage analytics or usage statistics for different APIs for different uh, applications, for different clients, and also uh, provide, they provide you uh, dashboards for any faulty invocations. They provide you geographic, geographical uh, analysis and analytics in terms of uh, the usage patterns of your APIs from different parts of the world. And there are many other set of uh, dashboards that are provided by different uh, API management vendors. And on top of that, uh, many of them do provide you options to customize this dashboard and make your custom uh, dashboards as per your own use cases. So you should utilize the power of analytics uh, for the API management platform so that uh, you get a clear picture of what exactly happening for the API ecosystem that you have. What are the clients uh, looking into your APIs? Uh, which APIs are performing well? Which APIs need improvement and uh, any other uh, aspects that are uh, important for your business. You can always uh, drill down and you can also uh, take any necessary actions, be it corrective actions or preemptive actions based on the analysis reports that you are generating from the analytics. Many of these uh, uh, API management platforms provide you option to export the reports uh, in PDF formats or in different formats. And then you can look into those uh, uh, reports you can discuss and you can have sessions within your technical teams or within your management teams to uh, uh, to critically analyze and understand uh, what exactly uh, the patterns are being shown through these analytics and uh, then accordingly you can uh, take any actions another very important thing in terms of the best practices for api analytics is that you should very you should be very uh, critical and careful about the data that has, that is being uh, stored on your platform because analytics data which is real time data gets populated uh, in any of the storage that you have chosen like relational database or maybe it's a no sql database or it may be a file system depending on the uh, api management platform that you are using but whatever is the uh, storage you are using this is very important that you have a proper policy for archiving and purging of the data because uh, if you don't take proper actions in terms of uh, archiving and purging of your analytics data, then there is a uh, performance implication and you might experience degradation in your analytics uh, uh, dashboards performance. So uh, you should make sure that uh, any data which is older than a specific time, depending on your requirement, should be archived. Uh, like normally, uh, nobody cares for the analytics data for which is uh, maybe uh, a year old or maybe a few months old because uh, this is a real time analytics so you are more interested in the real time data so any data which is older than specific amount of time you should be go, you should be archiving that data or if you don't have an archiving policy you should be purging that data the next uh, point that we are going to discuss is api management platform monitoring so API management cluster should be monitored for the health and performance because once you have an API management platform and you have API gateway on top of your backend services, then monitoring of this platform and to ensure uh, that the health of this platform is uh, in, a, in a stable state is very important because you cannot afford uh, any type of glitches or any, term, any type of health issues or performance issues for your API management cluster. So you should always have uh, a proper monitoring uh, for your APIs you so, so that uh, if there is anything wrong or if there is any performance issues or there are any problems in terms of the hardware, in terms of software, or in terms of uh, any technical uh, issues uh, for the API management cluster, not only for the gateway, but also for your traffic managers, for your key managers, and for your analytics, for your uh, monetization platform. So all these things should be critically and properly monitored and based on the monitoring, you should have proper alerts generated for any abnormal behaviors. So any issues that are coming in for your gateways or for other components in your API management platform, 
th those should be uh, communicated to the respective teams for the necessary actions uh, in real time. And if you see any abnormal user activities, uh, those also should be communicated and there should be a type of uh, monitoring uh, on your API management platform which takes care of these things so that you don't fall into any uh, problems in terms of the denial of service attacks or any type of vulnerability for uh, your analytics platform or for your overall monitoring, uh, overall API management platform. And also any resource utilization alerts should also be generated like if you uh, observe or if you experience uh, CPU or memory or hardware resources over utilization or anything which is abnormal and crosses the thresholds that you have defined, there, there should be alerts to the respective uh, teams to take the actions. The next best practice that we are going to talk about is uh, about API management performance tuning. This is very important that uh, API management platform or the layer of API management once added on top of the backend services, it should not cause any uh, latency or throughput uh, degradation. Rather, it should help you and assist you in improving the performance. So this new layer should not be a uh, added burden. Rather, it should be an added advantage for your overall API ecosystem. So there are a few steps uh, which you can uh, generally perform in order to improve the performance other than the vendor specific uh, improvements because any API management platform uh, that you have in your environment will have its own uh, best practices or its own performance tuning. So for that, you will have to refer to the documentation of that specific API management platform. Like if you are using WSO2 API manager, you will have to look into uh, certain performance tuning, tuning options uh, specific to that uh, API management platform. And if you're using uh, Google APG, you will have to look for the performance tuning points uh, which are rele relevant to APG. And same is the case for other uh, different uh, API management uh, vendors or products. But here I'm specifically talking about some of the generic points that you will have to consider. The first point is use caching for APIs wherever possible. So this is very important because uh, what caching does is that uh, if it, it, it reduces the overall traffic that is passing to the back end. So what happens is that let's suppose that you have an API which gives certain data uh, which, which doesn't change much often. Like you have data for uh, certain uh, value of uh, some, uh, some product which does not change every day. It changes only once in a day. So now in that type of API, even if you are uh, if you have thousands of requests coming in and you are calling backend API for those thousands of requests, this is unnecessary calls call to the backend because the value will remain same. So these are the type of APIs for which you have options of using the caching functionality which is provided by the API management platform. And what it ha what it does is that it caches that uh, data for that API response. And every time there is a new call for that API resource operation, instead of calling it from the getting the data from the back end it directly uh, re returns the data to the calling party or to the api user directly from the cache so this caching mechanism reduces the overall uh, network bandwidth uh, utilization and it improves the performance the next point is gateway level validations should be uh, used in order to avoid any unnecessary load to the back end this is very important that uh, any of those calls which are uh, invalid in terms of the basic uh, validation, like you have uh, certain validation, XST based validation, or maybe you have some JSON validation. So these type of validation should be added as a policy on your API management level. So if those policies are violated or if the validation doesn't fulfill the requirement and it's invalid uh, request, it should be directly responded back to the client from the API manager instead of passing it to the back end and doing all that validation in the back end system. Because uh, if every request is going to the back end uh, for an invalid uh, data or invalid payload, it's going to have an added uh, utilization, unnecessary added utilization of the bandwidth. Then another point is that you should avoid too much transformation and mediation policies. Mediation policies and transformation uh, related policies which are provided by API management platform are very good and they, they help you a lot uh, in fulfilling certain tasks. But you should be very careful and you should be very much smart enough whenever deciding where you exactly you need to use the transformation and mediation policies 
uh, for your request or for your response data. Unnecessarily putting a lot of mediation policies and playing around with the request and response uh, XMLs or JSONs before they are forwarded to the next party results in uh, throughput de degradation. So you should use mediation policies, you should use the transformations, but only when it's uh, it's it's very much needed and there is no other options uh, other than using these policies and also whenever you are using mediation or transformation policies you should make sure that you are using the best practices uh, specific to those transformers and mediation policies so that uh, there are no added latency and delay latency factors added uh, for the uh, api calls the next point uh, for the API management performance tuning is that uh, you should uh, do the loose coupling of logging, alerting, and analytics functionalities. Most of the points that I'm discussing, they might be specifically for the on-premise type of API management uh, platform. If you are using uh, maybe a cloud-based or a hybrid uh, approach for your API management platform, in that case, many of these uh, option may be already addressed by the vendor itself. But if you are using an you know, on-premise uh, implementation of your API management platform, then all of these points will be uh, applicable for you. So for the logging and alerting, and maybe for analytics functionalities as well, it's very important that uh, these, uh, these type of functionalities should not uh, be impacting the synchronous calls that are being made by the clients to the API operations. So what you can do is that you can always make them asynchronous and you can have delegation mechanisms uh, so that uh, any type of logging that is being done, any type of uh, alerts that are being generated or some of the analytics, maybe, the, maybe pushing the data to the analytics uh, uh, databases and maybe retrieving the data from analytics, this, this should be uh, lo loosely coupled. And it should be, uh, they should not be affecting the performance for the actual API calls. There are different ways you can do this for different uh, vendors, but yes, most of the vendors do provide you uh, flexibility and options to play around with these things to make them uh, loosely coupled. The next point is that purging and archiving policies should be defined for the databases. Most of the cases, whenever you are uh, uh, utilizing any of the vendors, uh, any of the API management platform, uh, you are uh, saving a lot of data to the databases, be it uh, for analytics or be it for any other scenario for your uh, overall uh, API management platform. But you should be very uh, much uh, careful about uh, the load that is going to the database and how you are tuning this data and how you are archiving this data and how you are purging any of the uh, old data. Because uh, if uh, eventually your databases uh, uh, the amount of data that you have, the number of records that you have in different tables in your databases grows uh, to a certain extent, then it becomes a performance uh, bottleneck. So you should be very careful and you should have certain specific policies and you should have a proper monitoring on your databases as well to avoid these type of issues. And also uh, for your databases, you should be very careful uh, to make sure that there are no such locking activities because uh, based on my experience, I observed that there were a lot of cases where, where once we had a clustered uh, deployment of our API management platform, then we were observing and we were experiencing certain uh, locks on some tables in the database, which was causing the performance issues. So you should be very careful about all these points and you should make sure that your databases are fine tuned. You have proper policies for archiving and purging uh, implemented for your databases. And also you have proper indexing for your tables and for other objects on your database according to the best practices provided in the documentation for the specific API management platform that you are using. Okay, so the next point that we are going to discuss is about the upgradation of your API management platform. So it's very important that you keep your environment up to date with the latest production version, with the la latest product version, with the latest fixes for any issues, with the latest security patches and your latest OS updates on your environment. Because uh, what happens is that time to time, different uh, vendors, uh, different API management vendors do provide patches and they do provide the new versions of their products to improve the performance, to, uh, to resolve any issues that were there in the previous uh, version. And also uh, there can be some custom changes and some other uh, important updates. So it's very important that you take those uh, updates into consideration 
and also it improves the security of your overall API management platform. You should never rely on just keeping your system as is and not to upgrade it. You should be periodically upgrading it. You should take care of any major fixes that are provided and any major security updates that are provided by the vendor. And accordingly, you should take the action and you should keep your system and keep your overall API management platform up to date to the latest product version and to the latest patches. And for any upgradation, you should always, always follow the best practices provided by the vendor. The next important point is scalability considerations. Scalability uh, is very important because uh, you never know that uh, the API management environment that you have, if it's capable of handling the requests that are coming into your API management platform and to API Gateway as of now, will it be capable to handle if this total number of uh, API hits and the total number of clients or total number of uh, API subscribers that you have grow to a certain extent? So you should have you should have uh, an API management platform which has ability to uh, have horizontal and vertical scale. So you should have uh, these things in mind whenever you are deciding for a particular API management platform. You should discuss it with their uh, technical support team. You should uh, read from their documentation that how you are going to scale it. What is the impact on overall API management platform once you are going to do any type of scaling? How you can add additional gateways? how you can handle additional uh, analytics data by adding maybe another component for, uh, for the analytics, how you are going to increase your traffic manager's capabilities and your key manager capabilities to fill, fulfill the requirements that you have and uh, fulfill the requirements that you might have in the future. And it's not only about the API gateway and API management uh, components, but also your backend services should be fine-tuned. And with reference to fine grain microservices instead of heavy monolithic services. Because if you have uh, your backend services implemented in such a way that they are monolithic in nature, and for any change or for any uh, scaling that you are going to do, is going to impact many functionalities altogether, then it will become difficult for you to do the, uh, take the decisions for the, for the future scalings and improvements. So you should go for an approach where you are creating multiple microservices which are fine-grained. And in that way, if you have to scale them up, if you have to scale them down, it will be very convenient for you, not on at the API gateway level, but also at the backend level. Okay, so the next point that we are going to talk about is periodic performance and security assessment. So it's very important that you keep an eye on the performance of your overall API management uh, platform. So you should identify any bottlenecks you should identify if there are any problem areas. How you can identify, you will have monitoring uh, implemented. We have talked about the monitoring already, and you will have analytics as well available. So from the analytics dashboards, you can observe the, uh, the usage and the, uh, and the statistics of all your APIs and how they are performing. Plus with the monitoring, you can identify what kind of problems and what kind of issues your uh, environment is facing. And then you can apply any necessary fixes, like if you have to, to add any new resources uh, in terms of CPU resources, hardware resources, memory resources, or maybe uh, some improvements on the network side, you can take all these type of actions based on the security and performance assessments, which you have to do periodically. Then you will have to coordinate with your vendor and the support um, uh, subscription that you have with the vendor, because uh, product owner knows best about the product and they know about the nitty gritties and the internal technicalities of the product better than you. So uh, like if you have uh, Google APG or if you have MuleSoft API Manager, you have WSO2 API Manager, whichever API management platform that you're using, uh, to get the best advice, you will have to coordinate and you will have to contact with them, with their support team, to if you are facing any performance issues or if you have to perform any type of security and uh, performance assessments. Then uh, it's also important that whenever you are making any changes, like you are making changes for the scalability by adding new resources or adding new gateways or adding new components for the API, API management platform, or if you are making any other changes for your APIs or for your API management system, then you will have to do the performance testing again to make sure that any action that you are performing, uh, they are improving the performance instead of uh, degrading the performance. And security is very important, so you should have periodic vulnerability assessment tests as well, where you should uh, do the different type of testing like cross scripting and uh, other type of uh, 
security vulnerabilities should be checked and addressed. And if there are any problems that you observe in terms of security, those should be uh, then you should have a coordination with the support team and you should take the necessary actions. So that's it from this video. And uh, just at the last, I would like to make a point that APIs are your face value for your business. And so you have to manage them well as you do for your face. So I hope that the information that I communicated to you through this uh, tutorial or through this video is helpful for you. If you have any questions or if you have any other points that you would like to raise, feel free to write in the comment section. I will try to make sure that I respond to your questions. And again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. Thank you.